Hi, I'm Bill Mosley, and you're in the horror basement. <laughs> Lick my plate, you dog bitch. To the horror basement. Coming to you from the TN Horror News Studios in the basement of my mom's trailer. I'm one of your hosts, Johnny Leroy. As always, we got our horror experts here with us. Jim Jam. Jim Jam here. Yeti. Hey, hey, hey. Our head writer. You just go check out TNHorror.com. And we are serving up horror all over the land like biscuits and gravy, baby. And uh, on this episode, we will be discussing Universal Monsters. Are they scary? Do you find them scary? And the adaptation of them, or the progression that the new world has brought them to. Rob Zombie, break out your hater, Ed, because we have a fucking hater on the group. (laughs) (laughs) And the movie of the week is 31. And it's on Shudder. But Johnny, I don't have Shudder. Oh my gosh. Well, stay tuned. We got you a promo code for a 30-day free of Shudder. So you stay so tuned you for that. So you can watch 31. Yeah. And you can watch the Rob Zombie commentary on that, which is what I did. And the behind the scenes of the movie. Yeah. and uh, Or if, you can watch Cannibal Holocaust, because that's what I did. <laughs> <laughs> and if you are new to listening to us, we greatly appreciate you. Thank you for listening to us. Uh, if you come from the Full Moon Festival and you listen to my spiel and talk and all that shit, I appreciate you coming and checking us out. I mean, it's awesome. Uh, we appreciate all new listeners. We appreciate our current listeners. You guys rock. If it wasn't for you, we wouldn't have anything, which we still don't. So I don't know how that works. <laughs> so, <laughs> hey, Johnny, what did we do this weekend? Full Moon Festival. And it was a success. Thank you, Bridget. First off, yes. Bridget, thank you. You're fucking awesome. I know you're listening. So, you're amazing. Thank you so much. You she brought. fucking pulled it off big time, man. She come dressed as Lady Pennywise. Yes, and uh, someone at work today, like I showed them the costume, and they're like, I really liked her costume, like how it was feminine. And I was like, yeah, it was custom made. Yeah, she got it off of uh, Pinterest. So, yeah, and <coughs> she's a badass. She. Set up a photo shoot. We got tons of people brought in. Those pictures will be out Thursday. We originally said Monday. We, Way more than we ex- we thought but or expected. We got a lot of great people come by and get their picture took. Yeah. But we also, Bill Mosley. Yes, Bill Mosley. Um, Lou Temple. Yeah, he got his picture. And the guy that played uh, and Dr. Sage. Dave. Oh, Dave too, yeah. Yeah. And Doctor, the guy that played Doctor, he was in the pictures when I was going through them yesterday. Okay, I didn't. So, yeah. So, we got like... Oh, yeah. I think... I'm, I don't know. CJ Graham didn't stop by, did he? No, no. <clears throat> but he come out, but there's a lot of people that were scared. Oh, yeah. There's people that couldn't look, look at her. Yeah, I, I was saying something about, you know, this will be on Instagram. And she's like, hell with Instagram. I ain't taking a picture with that. <laughs> Yeah, but then she got a picture with this like little one year old baby that. Yeah, the baby was just sitting there. She said the baby was trying to take her teeth out. Yeah, and she's just looking at the teeth like, oh, they were cool. So, hey, and that's the thing. If you uh, watch horror movies while your kids are little, then they don't believe in monsters when they get older. Kind of desensitizes them. Yeah, so start your kid off young. Yeah, because mine was running around the festival having a blast. Yeah, and that way they can be BGB certified one day. Yeah. So no, we had uh, <clears throat> Southern thing. Sun I mean, was there, our friends from Southern Sun. Yes, awesome they tent up. fam. They're fucking amazing. Made me an awesome shirt again. Yeah, got me, got me an too. orange. And, but uh, yeah, <laughs> so we had a great time. Uh, thank you for all that stopped by and talked to us. And Like I say, if you're a new listener, we greatly appreciate it. Thank you, Ben and Stacy. Uh, they're awesome people. Uh, so, I mean, you know, we had a great uh, time. And Yeti, though, he was up there in Knoxville repping. Tennessee Horror yeah, yeah. Stuff. I, uh, Saturday night, I went out to uh, the Knoxville Horror Film Fest. It's like the 10th year in a row they had it. Um, Hell yeah. Honestly, it's the first one I've made it to. 
I was out there as a guest of the uh, the Mighty Lunch Ladies. Yeah, that's such a good uh, show, man. Clarissa Jacobson, the writer director, was in uh, Barcelona for our festival. So myself and uh, Chris Fickey, I think is his name, Fickey or Fickley, I, I, I don't know. Uh, he played the principal in Lunch Ladies. He was there. We got to hang out a little bit, snap some pictures, uh, and they just like showed a bunch of really dope shorts. Uh, we had a bunch of local filmmakers that did a, a little grindhouse shorts, like three to five minutes. And then we watched uh, Anna and the Apocalypse. It's a <clears throat> musical set during Christmas with zombies. Uh, I didn't think it would be great, but it was, it was fucking, it was amazing. Yeah, when you said uh, musical, you lost me. Yeah, it, it, see, that's what I thought too, but it was yeah. really fun. It was such a fun movie. All right, cool. Uh, so- all, all together, man, the, the whole festival was put together. We were like at a Regal 8, uh, really comfortable theater. It was a good time. I am I will be going back next year. Hey, oh, yeah. hey, you said comfortable. Does that mean comfortable for big boys? Yeah. Oh, shit. Big boy yeah. certified. That's a shirt I need. BB man. certified. B- 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 boy B- certified. <laughs> no, yeah, you can't do that. <laughs> BBC. Maybe. I didn't say B. No, 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 no. You'd have to put the certified part. Yeah. Yeah, I must say. You got a shirt that says BBC. You'd have to put the BB certified. Okay. Then okay. that people would be like, people would be like, maybe. Maybe. So, hell yeah, uh, Yeti. I'm glad uh, you had a good time out there and uh, repping us and lunch ladies. Yeah, they're good people. <clears throat> but, they uh, are. Love the lunch ladies. But, uh, and uh, it's still October, guys, so it's still Breast Cancer Awareness Month. And it is a fact that breast cancer can happen to any of us. We want to help each other by spreading the word that prevention is the key for fighting this shit, guys. Women, ladies, whatever. You know, we all have a mom, a sister, an aunt, or a person who we know. And by spreading the word, we can make a difference. We're all at risk, and by promoting the early detection through home checkups and contacting your doctor, if you find any unusual signs, don't be scared. Go do it. The idea is to keep people informed about their bodies. Let, let's not forget, men make up 1% of breast cancer cases. And, like, for real, it's, it goes any race, any gender. Like, it, it does not fucking care. So, fuck cancer. Fuck cancer. Fuck cancer. Uh, also, this month is Domestic Violence Awareness Month. Uh, that's another thing that can happen to anybody, yeah, exactly. any gender, any race. Uh, it's, it's a fucked up situation when you know, there's somebody who's supposed to care about you more than anybody else, but you know, it's a piece of shit. It's just really just being a complete piece of shit. So, uh, I mean, if you're, if you're in that situation, you're not alone. If you know somebody who you think is in that situation, reach out to them. Uh, you can go to the hotline.org or call uh, 1-800-799-7233. Uh, and they, they, their, whole, their whole reason for being is, is to help people get out of those fucked up situations. Uh, if you wanted to change a life, man, you can go to the hotline.org, make a $20 donation, and uh, that covers the cost of one entire phone call that could possibly save somebody's life. So if you want to know you're doing something good with your money, you can head up to uh, thehotline.org, make a $20 donation, and maybe save somebody's life. Oh, yeah. Make a difference, guys. And with that, we're going to move in to our first topic. Universal, Universal Monsters. Monsters. Dun, dun, dun. Dun, dun. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> <laughs> All right, do you find these creatures scary, or do the modern versions terrify you? You know, like Dracula, Frankenstein, the mummy, the wolfman, creature from the Black Lagoon, which is, I wish they would fucking make something with that. Aren't they coming the up with something The Invisible Man is also one of them. Yeah, but are they are they not coming up with something with the creature? I haven't heard of Like, that's something that needs to be done. You know, and uh, originating films starting in the 20s and early 30s, like, gosh, Bela Lugosi portrayed Dracula in 1931. Fucking 1931. Almost, I mean, you're looking 90, almost 90 years out. Yeah. And, uh, which is wild. Like, you you think about it, like, Dracula's been around forever. Like, 
Right, like just the thoughts of Dracula and all that shit, which I guess it comes. Wasn't he like they didn't they say he's Vlad? He was a real person. Well, Vlad the Impaler, they claimed was a uh, Dracula. Like, Is that where is that inspired from? Yeah, and I don't yeah. know if, it was, if his last name was Dracula. And I, I think I think Dracula came from like Vlad Dracul is like Vlad of the Dragon or something like that. Yeah, he was just and fierce and badass. But he would uh kill his people, kill the people that try to invade his, you know, whatever, his castle or whatever you want to call it, his area, and impale them. Like, have their bodies, like, on these fucking giant steaks. Yeah. And the claim was is that he would go out there and eat dinner around them. That was the claim. Whether or not that's true, who fucking knows. I mean, you know what I'm saying, how shit goes. I mean, like the old, old movies, I'm not big into, you know? What about you? Like, Phantom of the Opera, I think I've seen... A Phantom of the Opera movie. I've seen uh, seen bits and pieces of like the Wolfman and uh, yeah, and part of the part of the Mummy, and it was just, I mean, the writing holds up. The writing's solid. I mean, I mean obviously the movie's from like the twenties and thirties, so I mean, visually, yeah, whatever. But still, I mean, they're really well shot for the time, um, and like I said, the writing is really solid. And those creatures have like really took hold, and. Uh, so they're they're part of the culture, you know. Not even not even just like hor- the horror culture, just like in general, especially this time of year, you know. The Wolfman, Frankenstein's monster. Uh, I mean, they're everywhere. They're on every, everything you look at. I mean, there's no denying the impact that Universal had bringing those monsters to life. Yeah, it's wild. Uh, like I was telling to you earlier, like a guy at the Full Moon Festival had a uh, Lon Chaney. Boris Karloff or uh, Bella Lugosi and Boris Karloff signatures, and it's like I don't collect sign- signatures, you know, and autographs and all that shit. But that's fucking awesome. Oh yeah, that is that. That's really awesome. Like I mean, and really like I don't get into the older films, you know, and I, and not everybody does. I mean, you can't fucking. But like today, let's talk about like. How you got to think like if it wasn't for the first Dracula movie, there wouldn't be all these vampire movies. You know what I'm saying? Like just somebody put that shit out there and like put Nosferatu up or whatever. Whenever when did Nosferatu is not part of the universe of monsters though, is it? No. So I guess that don't count. That's but, just, I think Dracula was the only vampire. I guess. Yeah, 1931. Yeah, but <clears> like, <throat> which he was a classic vampire though. Like I think that's where you know the 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 good looking. Had the, yeah, the kind of the dreamy. Yeah, like of, where you think of a, <clears throat> what is it? What's the interview with the vampire? Seductive. Yeah. Yeah. Wasn't was succubus? That, was that the Brad Pitt and the yeah, Brad Pitt and the Tom Cruise? Tom Cruise. Yeah, yeah like <clears throat> them vampires. That's the kind of vampire that would be pimp tight to be. Because <laughs> I mean they're fucking suave as fuck. You know what I'm saying? They got the fucking nice clothes. They're, I mean, granted, it's back in the old days, but, you know, they fucking look at you and you fucking, you know, fall in love or whatever. Like, I don't want to be these grungy-ass fucking vampires. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But someone that we, we we should, you know, probably got on the podcast for this one today is Craig. Yeah, like, he's going to be like, <clears throat> you fucking bastards. You could have fucking called me. Yeah. But, but yeah. like, that's why I say let's talk about the, how they're modernized now more than, like... Because well, we didn't we didn't answer that question, did we? Do I find the older ones uh, scary? scary? No. Yeah. But do I? But find back the, in the day, they probably did. But do I find the new ones scary? No. <clears throat> because they no. haven't made a good one yet. No, I'm just talking. I don't. It's a. They're fake. I don't find it scary. <laughs> like vampires and wolves, werewolves. I don't. Or mummies, like I don't see them as being too scary. I'd be more scared of the fucking creature from the Black Lagoon. Yeah, that's one that would get me. I mean, goddamn, you're in water and something fucking grabs you. Yeah, I yeah, like you said, no, I don't find them. Cre- uh, neither one of them because they haven't done a good one yet. The remake or, uh, or modernized modernized them. Well, we're, I'm talking about like just like how from the Universal Monsters how it's grown to this type of fucking Dracula. Well, you know, you know what I'm saying. Like, I don't really believe they did a good job of Dracula yet. That I've seen well, even like in Dracula. an interview with the vampire, like I mean, <clears throat> you could kind of technically say he was Dracula, could you not? 
Well, I no, mean, I guess you could. I mean, no, it's definitely the, the, def, the cinematic vampire definitely took cues from from Dracula with that uh, debonair as fuck. Yeah, just like pulling all the chicks. You know, that's kind of Dracula's mo. Uh, oh man, I've seen some really good uh, vampire yeah. movies in the past couple of years. There's two. I can't. I think one's like the Thompsons, and one's something else. They're they're completely different names, but they're it's about a family of vampires who um they're just like they're not pussy vampires. They're just like they move from place to place and feed on whoever, and that's it's like this really interesting character study. And both of them are really solid films. And then uh, what we do in the shadows is um just fucking hilarious. It's it's probably my favorite vampire movie of all time. And there's a lot, there's a, a nod to, you know, the old uh, Nosferatu vampires and um, like the Dracula era too and then more modern stuff. It's, I mean, if you get a chance, you should definitely check that one out. It's it's just the progression from, uh, from Dracula to what we have now, you know. It's, it's interesting to see. I, what I, I was thinking of vampires just now, for some reason I started thought about the vampires from Supernatural. I know that's probably a little far off subject, but still, it's, it's vampires. But, Johnny, what do you think about those? Don't all their teeth, their their whole mouth is down teeth. Like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Like, it's fucked up. Like, they'd rip your fucking shit off. But, yeah. Anyways, uh, back on subject. Um, yeah, like Johnny was saying, I would love to see uh, the creature from the Black Lagoon. And hell, did is there an Invisible Man movie remake? Have they? Wasn't I don't know what, if was the, that one movie with uh, Kevin <clears throat> Kevin Bacon Hollow Man Hollow Man was, was that, that was that a take on it? I mean, I mean, I guess yeah. I mean, well, they had to get the idea. I mean, I've never watched the Invisible Man, so it's hard for me. Yeah, I, I always wondered why the Invisible but, Man was uh, never on the statue above. <laughs> Corey did post like uh, all the movies. He he posted on Instagram, uh, probably on Facebook too. But uh, Corey, yeah, Corey, Corey, Chicken Bloods, Corey. Oh yeah, yeah, my bad. He posted a, uh, it was like regularly one hundred and fifty dollars, like down to seventy dollars, like half, like whatever you know, on sale for all the Universal Monster movies, the original. It was like thirty movies. Yeah, for fucking seventy bucks. Oh yeah, you remember we gave away one for uh, Ivana Cadaver that one time we gave a box set away. Oh yeah, that's right. Universal Monsters is a phrase used to describe the horror, suspense, and science fiction films made by Universal's. The Wolfman in 1941 was with Lon Chaney Jr. So imagine your dad was like a Universal Monster, and then you grow up, and then you become a Universal Monster. That'd be pretty cool. And like the number like one you know, like actor, you know, like the leading monster movie actor in the 1940s, just as his father had been two decades earlier. Like how fucking wild is that? Literally, father following father in his footsteps. Huh? Like you see that shit, you see what your dad, you know, like oh yeah, that seems like a fucking badass thing to do, you know? Hell yeah. Yeah. So uh, the dark universe is the reimagining of the universe's iconic monsters to revive this genre for new generations. Woo! And with the mummy yeah. that was uh in a. Uh, June 9th, 2017, you know, the Tom Cruise fucking movie that came out that I didn't watch. That flopped. I, you know, I heard nothing but bad things about that. Of course, you know, like, it wasn't bound to work. Like, just because they're just, it's a fucking cash grab. Like, they're trying to just, which ruined. Yeah. I think it's kind of everything ruined, like, bringing everything else now. back. Just even trying to bring anything else back. Like, could you imagine if they did a Frankenstein movie? I'd watch it. Dude. Like a good one, like not I never... Frankenstein either. And what? Like not I Frankenstein. Yeah, and get Rob Zombie to redo it. No, shut the fuck up. You know, <laughs> like I've never seen the original Frankenstein, but one of my favorite movies of all times is Mel Brooks's Young Frankenstein. Oh yeah. Okay, and if you, if you watch that movie, like he fought the studio hard as shit to have it filmed in black and white. And if you watch all the, the like a lot of the lab props and stuff where he actually builds the monster, those are all from the original Frankenstein. Oh damn! Yeah, like but I didn't mind I Frankenstein though. 
I mean, it was an all right movie, but it's kind of stupid too. Cause like, how do you have a Frankenstein. good looking Frankenstein? Hmm. You've never see? seen that Frankenstein. I don't know. Like, yeah, it, a lot of it didn't make sense. What about Frank and Winnie? <laughs> Frank and Winnie? It's a cartoon. I was just being oh. stupid. I was, I was just picture your dog as a Frankenstein. That's what it was. It's a Dobson. Okay. It's a Frankenstein dog. Oh, all right. Well. That, taking it back to last week's topic of family friendly horror. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Robot. And with that, this person's favorite. Universal okay. Monster. Yeah, who are we talking about? Tim Bur- I mean, Rob Zombie. <laughs> <laughs> and just so you know, somebody's a hater. Hater. I don't know why I he's am. a hater. Do you like his music? Do you like White Zombie or... I like Astro Creep 2000. That one White Zombie album. That thing was fucking awesome. Uh, when it first came out, I listened to Hellbilly, De- Hellbilly Deluxe when he went with his solo thing and was just kind of like, meh. Uh, eh. But that one White Zombie album is, I mean, it's its like top 20 for me. So what put you off of Rob Zombie? Uh, well, you know, I really liked House of a Thousand Corpses. Solid movie. Devil's Rejects was all right, but it just got to where it was just, then he, you know, uh, fucking those terrible Halloween remakes. <laughs> and then, uh, and it, man, it just, it's, he's like the Tim Burton of horror. It's like everything is just a fucking excuse to put Sherry on screen. I just, I don't know, dude. And she always plays the same goddamn character. The only difference between Baby and the character in, that she plays in 31 is that she doesn't really fucking kill anybody in 31, but she's still, like, the trailer park, like, total slut bag. <laughs> it's like, is that is that the only thing you can write? Is, like, trailer park whores and fucking redneck weirdos? I don't know, man. I just, I don't, I don't fucking, I don't understand the buzz. Because it's, it's like he wants to do grindhouse movies and, like, splatter movies. But it's just like he just doesn't have the balls to really push it. I don't know, man. It's like pseudo extreme horror, and uh, that's just my opinion, though. Whatever, what, whatever fucking tickles your pickle, man. <laughs> so, uh, well, he, I got to see Daniel Harris's boobs because him. So, yeah. But so, uh, born Robert Bartley Cummings grew up in Bartley. Yeah, I'd say Cummings. Bartley. Yeah, so he grew up in Haverhill, Massachusetts, loving the genre of horror. Yeah, so, I mean, um, wait, what was he talking about? His music. (laughs) I'm fucking with you. (laughs) (laughs) No, uh, his music, I I mean, I listen to his music, I don't remember a lot of it, you know, like Zombie Girl, wasn't that one of them? Living Dead Girl. Yeah, Living Living Dead Dead Girl. Girl. Zombie Girl, what the fuck ever, right? Same thing. No, it ain't. A, zo- a living dead? Anyways. Is that not a zombie? <laughs> the living dead? I don't know. It might just be the drugged out fucking bitches that was following him around all of his fucking life. But anyways, that's yeah. fucked up to me. Maybe like, that's who he's... Uh, maybe that's the character he writes for Sherry over and over again. <laughs> <laughs> that's so fucked up, dude. <laughs> <laughs> that's fucked up. <laughs> but uh, here, here's you speak of Sherry, but uh, they got married on 2002 and how on Halloween, but not for did. any spooky reasons or nothing. Not no spooky reasons. No, of course not. No, it just so happened to be that day. They eloped. They just ran off. And got <laughs> Bullshit. <laughs> yeah, that their their the regular date was like uh, November the ninth, 2002, and guys. These were fucking notes. Don't think I fucking know everything about Rob Zombie's life. <laughs> like, like, this is this is, this is uh, the producer's notes. <laughs> so do not think that I know everything. But uh, I just, I really just glossed over it. I was just gonna lean on my hate. I'm sorry. Yeah, that's good. That's what I was hoping you'd lean on. That was with life. Yeah. <laughs> well, I was hoping you would because, uh, like I say, I mean the hater hate is fucking full, and he is consu- yet he is consuming the fuck out of it. <laughs> 
Oh yes. All day. Well, I'm a uh, I'm not a hater on this because I, I really like uh, Rob Zombie's stuff, except for the Halloween remakes. But see, and with, okay, Lord okay, Salem. okay. This is with me coming in. Like, I'm not the the horror fucking growing up loving the shit you know my whole life. I like the Halloween movie though. I didn't mind the remakes as much. Like it didn't affect me. I didn't have that same effect as well, someone that's what I not. Really, all I really was thinking is because if you think about it, that brought more attention to Halloween. No, like, yeah, whether but, or not it was yeah. good or bad. I mean, but I'm just saying the way but, he put it is he made Michael Myers seem like a trailer park trash mama's boy. But he was fucking Michael Myers in his movies was fucking huge. Well, yeah, it was the uh, that was the problem with me. Though. Taylor like, Maine, Tyler yeah, Maine. Yeah, like that son of a bitch was like a beast. A beast. Yeah, like dude, how, what the fuck is he doing in prison? <laughs> in the fucking mental hospital, bro. The, what kind of fucking weight system they got in the mental hospital? Why would you give fucking mental patients fucking access to goddamn weights? <laughs> You, what are they feeding that motherfucker? Yeah, like, what the fuck, dude? Like, his fucking diet had to be, like, 6,000 calories a day. What hey, Dr. Loomis he? was, uh... <laughs> he was breeding a fucking killer. Yeah, he, he was, was in fucking there. injecting that motherfucker with roids just so he could fucking go out and hunt him. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? This is my white whale. Angel. <laughs> like, come on, man. That motherfucker was... I, I see, I don't have, like, the general like, hatred for remakes and reboots and shit. Like, you know, it's, it's what, it, like I said, whatever tickles your pickle, you know what I'm saying? I don't, yeah. You know, a, a, re, a reboot or a remake of an old franchise or an old movie, all it does is gets more eyes, especially in horror, all it does is gets more eyes and more money in the genre. And Which, he, you gotta think, he did bring that. some other people, like, which most people that are, like, heavy metal fans are probably horror fans. I mean, I think them go, like, almost hand-in-hand hand or whatever, you know? Hey, yeah. Like, like, do y'all believe that, though? Like, if you're, like, a super heavy metal fan, you probably love horror. I most, yeah, most yeah I mean, you at least have a, 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 a passing enjoyment of it, you know? Uh, I think the two go together really well. I wrote an article about uh, extreme horror and extreme metal not too long ago. Yeah, that's uh, right. It's on the website. Teen horror But uh, one thing that, uh, you know, the... Um, the remake did is brought some young stars up, and we got to meet one of those young stars this weekend. Dig, yeah, D- uh, was it Dig the Great? When is his rap name? I have no clue what his rap name is. It's but what got me bad. on Rob Zombie's movies is House of Thousand Corpses, and uh, uh, that movie was crazy. Wasn't that his first one though? I think I'm from what I understand. Yes, that's his first directorial debut, right, Yeti? Do you think that? Yeah, yeah, oh, that is okay. And then he brought out the the banger, the heavy hitter, Devil's Rejects. <laughs> yeah, he's probably rolling his eyes. <laughs> but uh, but something I'm also looking forward to is Three from Hell, because I want to see where this all ends. So next year sometime, I'm, I'm ready to see that one. But, uh, I wonder how many days he's going to spend on that movie. I'll watch it. I'm not going to the theater for it, but I'll damn sure watch it. Just because I, I enjoy uh, Sid Haig's performance as, uh, as Captain Spaulding, and I fucking love seeing Bill Mosley on screen. So, like, those guys are worth me sitting through the same old, same old again just to see their fucking performances. Speaking of that, yeah, Bill Mosley. I have my week. Dude, Bill Mosley's a cool motherfucker, man. Yes, he is. But uh, also, Rob Zombie may, uh, did the animated Haunted World of El Super Bisto. Bisto. Yeah. So, uh, did you see that? There was animated versions of Otis Driftwood and Captain Spaulding in that. Oh, shit. Huh. So you can see animated versions of them in that. that did Bill uh, and uh, Sid voice them? Yeah. Oh, that's cool. Because at their tables, they had pictures and stuff for... That show. Oh, is that what that was? Yeah. I didn't know that's what that was. Yeah. Well, now you know. Don't know, now you know, no. Speaking of the movie 31, which is our movie of the week, uh, Poncho was uh, at the festival and Johnny got to interview him. So you'll hear that coming up in a little bit. Yeah, he's a really, really fucking cool dude as well. 
Oh, yeah. He talked. Did, did you get talked to him about candy corn? Candy corn. Yeah, I was there with you. Hey, guys. Check this out. I went out to Screenville last last week. I put a review of it up. had a really great time. Doug Cox and his crew out there have a super good haunt. Where is Screenville? A lot of fun. Uh, when I went out there, they were playing Halloween on a, on a projection screen around a bonfire. I mean, and then this Sunday, the 28th, from 1 to 5, uh, out at Screenville, they're doing a trick or treat for charity. Uh, everybody brings it's they they want one gift per family, like new, unwrapped uh, for a kid uh, in a box per yeah. family. But you could bring more. I suggest you bring more. It's all going to OmniVision's foster care service. Oh, hey. It's uh, <clears throat> for their Christmas toy drive. What they do. Is they take care, they help, you know, give kids who are in the system for, you know, one reason or another. <clears throat> you know, for, everybody knows, everybody who's watched TV knows that it can be hard as fuck to be a foster kid. So OmniVisions tries to get toys and, and gifts and things like that together for kids of all ages uh, to make their Christmas a little better. There's going to be, there's not going to be, it's not going to be any spooky stuff. Uh, you, you can walk the trail, which is awesome. It's cut through the middle of a cornfield. Uh, trick or treat for the kids, you know, costumes and all that good shit. Uh, there's going to be games. There's going to be a bounce house. It's just going to be a lot of fun for everybody. That's uh, Sunday the 28th from one to five out at Screenville Haunted Attraction. I'll be out there. Knoxville, Tennessee. Uh, uh, yeah, right outside Knoxville. Um, you can find there. I'm going to be promoting this throughout the week, so you can get all your in it, all your uh, information, all your details, addresses, and everything from there. It's going to be a good time, man. It's definitely come out, bring the kids, and uh, give a little something for charity. Yeah, and if you don't already follow Tennessee Horror News on Instagram, go follow us on Instagram. And uh, we'll have all yeah, the definitely. information pop up when it's available, right, Yeti? Or whatever yes, else yes, you need it to... shouldn't should be before this podcast goes live. I'll start promoting that event pretty hard. Oh, sweet. So, and uh, speaking of, like, fall and the cold and Halloween... Uh, and, ch- and charities. Look, uh, it's fall, it's cool outside, and we got the candle for you. Tennessee Horror yeah. Nights candle. Pumpkin campfire with a crackling wick. Oh, yeah. If, oh, if you're a pumpkin no, no, spice no. bitch, this is the candle for you. It's fucking heavily scented. Yeah. You like this motherfucker. It, yeah, it's going to smell your house up real good. <laughs> it makes you uh, oh, yeah. happy it's fall right now. Yes. And if it's summertime or whatever, it'll make you happy. And wish that it was fall. <laughs> yeah, like you. Get... Oh man, it it smells just like fall. It's campfire. It's it's pumpkin. It's oh man, it smells so. It like I I I have mine out on the mantle in the living room, and I light it, and it just it just smells up the whole living room. And it's it just smells like campfire and basic bitch. Oh god, it smells so good. Yeah, and uh... that wick that crackles, it's really nice too. But where can you get it, Johnny? Macabre melts on Etsy. Macabre melts on Etsy. But um, and if she ain't got it, you fucking tell her to make it. Yeah, and also <laughs> until the twenty seventh, we are giving away a candle. That's the cutoff date. Oh, so, so you can enter. Yeah, in. Go check our Instagram for that. And uh, speaking of that, like you was all like, but Jonathan, I don't have Shutter. How am I supposed to watch thirty one? How am I supposed to watch next month when every fucking movie is going to be the Shutter exclusive movie of the week? Well, you go to Shutter.com, you create an account, and in that little promo code box right there, you type in TN Horror, T N H O R R O R. You get 30 days free. What? 30 days free, guys. Thousands of hours of fucking By the time horror. this podcast comes out, it'll be late enough in the month that you can go ahead and use your promo bing, code, bing, bing. get all your spooky viewing in, and catch the Joe Bob uh, marathon yeah. for Thanksgiving. Hell yeah. So why not do it? There's no it's reason fucking, you shouldn't. Yeah, it's fucking free. 30 days, free. If, if Fuck going out shopping for Black Friday. Exactly. Stay home. Crack open a good cold Lone Star beer and tune in to everybody's favorite horror host. Exactly. Live on Shutter. Eat your left. Look, like, you eat your fucking turkey, you take like a few hours nap. You get up and you eat your leftover turkey. And you keep watching Joe Bob. 
Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, right. it. yeah guys. So, and uh, speaking of uh, promo codes, we have one for Fangoria, and it's going to be exclusive for one day only for Halloween. It's fifteen percent off. Yep. Jim Jam bitch ass does not want to give out the promo code yet. I will. Uh, I will give it out on social media. Maybe uh, the thirtieth. Yeah, so just so it's only going to be available for that day. It's 15% off of a badass magazine. That's No one makes magazines no more. But 15% off, and it's like 100 pages in this magazine. It's quarterly. It's fucking awesome. It has all kinds of tons of shit about Michael Myers, the new Halloween movie. Tons of shit on how it was made and all this. I mean, behind the scenes, it's fucking awesome. So, yeah. So be checking out for that. Uh, so that's out another for... reason to go to our social media and follow us if you already don't. Or to yeah, tell your yeah. friends. Like, that's the thing. Go be like, you know, TNR News, they're doing some shit, yo. They got yeah. the promo codes for you, bro. Go hit them up. So we love y'all. Yep. And with all that, uh, it's time for... This is the movie of the week. M- movie. M- movie of the week. All right, guys. So, uh, the movie of the week is 31, 2016 movie by writer, director, Rob Zombie. The man. And uh, <laughs> my favorite Damn character, man. and we'll just say this, my favorite character was Sickhead. He was cool. That was Poncho. Oh, Mowers. yes. Poncho Mowers. That, that, right? was, that was the one, one of my favorite, that was my favorite part of the movie. Yes, he's fucking... Just, and, and, and after we get through... Talking about this, the the interview will be on there, and I ask him, you know, how he how he got that role. It's only like a little five minute interview, it's no, you know, like I didn't want to take up too much time. I was there, but he talks about working with Rob Zombie, and uh, you know what it was like. And he said he was the only one to have to uh, audition for his part. But one thing I did notice, uh, I liked about it, and all this is uh, Doomhead Richard Brake. This motherfucker, man, he stole the show when he showed yeah, up. Yeah, he, now he was an awesome character, too. But I really like Sickhead. Yeah, he was a very Just because he was a little Nazi clown. But uh, Doomhead, his line was, is, uh, I'm not a fucking clown. Like, mm. You know, he's not a clown. He's yeah. a murder for hire. He just painted his face white. Yeah, because that's what you had to do to be in the group. But man, it was fucking so just brutal, man. This motherfucker would beat himself in the face. Getting, like, hyped up for it and shit. Yeah. Um, the Hillbilly Hunger Games. <laughs> <laughs> Hillbilly Hunger Games. Fuck and this man. movie was set back in uh, nine, or 1976. And uh, it was, uh, on October 31st, which is why it's called 31, is what... Uh, Rob claims Mr. Zombie, if you want to call him, whatever the fuck you want to call him. Yet he probably has other things he likes to call him, but. <laughs> but, um, and that's why he's like, I get asked this all the time. I don't know why you get fucking asked that all the time. Everybody knows it's fucking 31. It's on Halloween. But, Duh. like, I mean, unless, well, I, I, no, I'm sorry. There's a lot of dumb fucks out there. My bad. Well, does it deliver on BGB? Sort of. There's one set of boobs. The BGB certified is blood, guts, and boobs. Like that's my certification rating. T-shirt pending. If it's my certification, not yours. You create your own fucking certification. <laughs> but there's one set of boobs, right? Like there's. Yeah. And they're older boobs. They're like milf boobs. Ginger which, Lynn. I mean, I'm not fucking hating on them. They're nice boobs. Ginger Lynn comes back to show her boobs off. But uh, this is a five carnival workers are kidnapped and held hostage in an abandoned hell-like compound where they are forced to participate in a violent game. The goal of which is to survive 12 hours against a gang of sadistic clowns. <laughs> you know, you got to do the fucking carnival or like the Sunday, Sunday, Sunday bullshit, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Like I mean, I said, and, and really I, hunger game. Yeah, there, there you go. Like, you got to be over dramatic. I mean, but... Uh, Who else? Which, Someone else was over dramatic in this movie. But, well, not over dramatic, but Malcolm McDowell as Father Murder. Now that's what was awesome about this movie too. But when we went to the theaters and watched it, I was like, "Holy fuck!" Like I like that guy. Like yeah. I, I, I don't know everything yeah. that he's been in, but I like his voice. Malcolm you know, McDowell's always fun. Yeah, like he's a cool dude. Like, and uh, Rob said that uh, he decided to do the big wigs 
you know, the white wigs or whatever, like the old school. And uh, Malcolm thought it was funny. Because I listened to the commentary, because I've already watched this movie. And uh, 31 had offered, you know, the director commentary. I was like, well, fuck it. And Shudder did. Yeah, sorry. Shudder <laughs> offered it. And uh, I was like, fuck it, I'm going to do it. We saw a Q&A of uh, Rob Zombie after the movie. Though. I think they had that on there, too. Did it? Okay. Sweet. You know, the other three that were... Oh, the behind the scenes. Yeah. Okay. Which, um, I mean, and... No, no. It had more than one set of boobs. The the, the black girl at the oh, beginning. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's right. And then it had the the woman that they had captured. So, yeah, it was BGB certified. Fuck yeah. Blood, guts, and boobs. Yep. He did it right. See? Uh, some things I really liked about this movie were just like people that, that were cast in it that I thought was really interesting. Malcolm McDowell being one, uh, you know, fucking, I, I, I've i loved him since I saw him in Clockwork Orange. You yeah. know, and uh, he's all, he's always good. Whatever he's doing, Malcolm McDowell's always fun to watch. And um, Sex Head was, uh, was the lady... Uh, Elizabeth Daly? Elizabeth Daly? Yeah. It's Tommy Pickles from the Rugrats. That she is. Oh, Tommy my God, Pickles dude. In a, <laughs> in a thousand other, like, nostalgic does, cartoons. Uh, and the only but, reason why I know any of this is because uh, I watched uh, Behind the Mic or whatever. Like, you know, like, yeah. uh, voiceover people. And she does, like, a ton of fucking voiceovers. She does. She's, Powerpuff she's Girls. Like, she's, I forgot all about that, dude. Dude, I just realized that fucking Lou Temple played Psycho Head. Yeah. I, he I, got I cut in I, half. But, yeah, I was like, fuck, we could have talked to him this weekend about it. Yep. He, it. he got cut in half. Oh, spoiler alert. My bad. <laughs> well, if you ain't seen this movie, but you can go watch it on show. Yeah, we got to go watch this at theater and a showing of it. And, I mean, I like the movie. I, I Could it have been better? Yeah. Oh. Well, he only shot it in, like, was it? 21 days. 20 yeah. days. And it was fan-funded. Uh, fan uh, That's cool. Hey, do you want to throw out there that little thing that he said in the Q&A that uh, he was on the phone with somebody and he come up with an idea because he yeah. was wanting to do something he, what was it called, a passion project, and he knew it wouldn't get made. So he, he said, I can come up with an idea on the phone right here, will you? and it would get made before that. And that's what 31 was. And that was kind of lazy. Yeah. Wow. So, like... Yeah. The laziest so of the, the lazy. the concept of 31 was just basically Rob Zombie being a huge dick to somebody on the phone. Yeah. Yeah, he was just probably... Uh, uh, the way it, I, it come off to me on that is he just made up a damn something real quick on the phone with somebody and got fans to fund it and made a movie out of it. Yeah. Wow. What and, about the RV in this movie? It was pretty cool looking. It's old school. Oh, yeah. I mean, he actually said that it was... Like, they drove it. Yeah. Like, it wasn't just sitting on the lot. That's some The dude that was driving it was driving it. and Yeah, he he also played in and they Red had Devil's like, Rejects. The guy that drove it, Redbone. Yeah, and they had, like, a, like they were talking about that sex scene, you know, where they showed the black chick's boobs. Like, them three, them two were in there, plus, like, two or three other camera crew people. And the fucking RV didn't have wasn't AC. It, wasn't it Trixie? Yeah. Yeah. But uh, didn't have no fucking uh, AC in it, so Ooh. it'd be fucking hot as fuck. But these are traveling carnival people, so, you know, they're used to being that shit. Carnies. Fucking carnies. But if you are a carny, we appreciate you. Because you make people nauseous. <laughs> I mean, come on, every fucking carnival ride's just spinning in a circle, and then they sell fucking mm. greasy-ass food in the middle. Yeah. Ugh. You know, you're eating funnel cakes, and then you're getting on a fucking ride that just spins you. Speak of the, since we're on the, the carnival the subject from this movie, I saw one time fried stick of butter. Yeah. Oh, God, that's so, so fucking gross. What the fuck? Why? Why would you... Oh, Yeti, would you eat a fried stick of butter? Like regular butter? Real butter. Like a stick of butter, just deep fried. or just battered, battered up, up and, and deep fucking fried. deep fried. No, fuck no. There ain't no... No. There, no, no. I think I had a dream about this. <laughs> It's a, but yet, the, when we had our little carnivore fair or whatever, see, they have huge chicken strips, man, that's like this long. It's fucking crazy. They're, it's not possible to be real. 
I don't know, but it's pretty good. Where? That's the corner or the fair here. The, who had it? The fair, the people in the middle, they had sticks of chicken that was this long. Oh, where they just put like... No, no, it was one piece of chicken. But it was on a stick, right? Yeah. Well, no, it was battered to look like one piece of chicken. Yeah, well, anyways. Yeah, uh, well, that uh, sounds pretty good, fucking good, though. I mean, I'd eat yeah. chicken on a stick. I mean, But, hey, this movie was fucking... I thought it was br- pretty brutal. It was a brutal movie. And uh, it took him a while to even get it down from the the MPAA, whatever. The NC-17 rating? Or, or, or did he get an X rating? Yeah, it was like... Because, like, the poncho molar scene where he, got, where he gets stabbed, mm-hmm. like, they had to fucking change it. Keep changing it, keep changing it because it was so, you know, intense, like the way that it showed. Because, I mean, it did show her kind of. And he said that every fucking knife and shit that they had on that was real. Wow. Like, they didn't have the money to fucking make fake. So, how fucking dangerous is that shit? You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. so it was a really dangerous movie to make. Yeah. Born of a complete dick move. Yeah. <laughs> yeah uh, we'll probably yeah. never get Rob Zombie to come on to interview <laughs> Yeti, well, uh, he's you, not going to come on to that. talk with us anyway Yeti, so. would you join us on that interview to talk to Rob why Zombie? wouldn't he I so. I mean, not yeah. everybody's got to fucking like you would you sip up hater would you sip on the hater raid when you talk to him Yeti but I mean probably <laughs> but for me uh, I would say I like the movie it's not it's not real bad to me. Like, I mean, it's a it's a decent movie. The ending fucking sucked, but whatever. I understand the ending now after he, ex- he had to explain it to me. Like when I watched the fucking director well, tell the ending, cause it's director boring. commentary. Well, it was at the end, you know, where they're face to face. Yeah. It was. She's not gonna. Uh, she's not gonna back down. She's not gonna back down and he's not gonna let her live. And no, but I, prob- I, I guess the way you're saying I still didn't like the fucking fact though that she crossed through a fucking tunnel did and then when she comes said? out he it's never fucking, explained that why did he? No. And it's just fucking broad fucking daylight. Yeah, it was crazy because it was it not it th- it's not even like dawn. Like if you would have had her crawl in there when it was fucking almost but, yeah, that's the thing I was thinking. Maybe, you know, she hid out in them tunnels for a for while. For that long? I mean, possibly, yeah. That's what I'm thinking happened. But, yeah, I would say... I'm uh, thinking maybe it was just that's when they could get the shot. Yeah, that's, it, what that's exactly saying. what it was. It was just like, fuck you. Yeah, and that's why it sucked. The ending sucked to me. So, but, uh, yeah. I mean, I would say go watch it. Yeah, why not? If you got Shudder, well, you ha- if you listen to us and use our promo code, you, you can Shutter. watch it for free. Yeah. So, so uh, I mean, yeah, and it, it's totally worth the price of admission. And, and this like, is why I don't the, like zombie films, and it was not garbage. And the whole thing was is with the movie of the week. If you're not listening, go create your own fucking opinion. Go form your own opinion on it. Yeah, and, yeah, definitely. And with that, uh, listen now to Johnny's interview with Poncho Moeller. Hi guys, so I'm here with Poncho Moeller, Thirty One, and many other fucking movies. Three from Hell. Yeah. Fuck yeah, dude. So, uh, all right, so let me ask you, what was it like working with Rob Zombie? Uh, it was a dream come true for me. You know, I grew up watching him. Uh, I feel like if you're going to be a part of a horror movie, why not be with one of the best directors of all time for that genre? He's a great director. He's good to his actors. He trusts, he trusts you. He created this fucking character that just insane and memorable, and I couldn't ask for more. Like, when he approached you about the character... What like your ultimate thoughts like? Okay, yeah. Um, you know, well, when I first auditioned for it, I was the only actor in the movie that even had to audition because oh, wow. he recycles his actors a lot. Yeah, you know? that's he, true. Yeah, once I didn't he even finds someone he likes, he trusts them, which is why I'm in Three from Hell now. But uh, yeah, in auditioning for the movie, I didn't had no idea I was auditioning for a Rob Zombie movie. Yeah. Oh, really? And so when I, it was just a killer clown. It was the torture scene where I'm torturing. Uh, or Kevin Jackson, and it was all in English, and then, um, you know, I ended up booking the role, and so, uh, with that, with that in mind, uh, I, they told me that it was a Rob Zombie movie, I was psyched, you know, I was so happy, and, and with that, um, 
I met, I got to meet Rob and, you know, I had this the idea that I was playing this killer clown and I went to my fitting and he's like, yeah, I'm going to have you playing like a Nazi. <laughs> and I was like, holy shit, man. Are, are you sure? He's like, yeah, you're going to be running around with a swastika on your chest. And then I was like, all right, you know, why not? Like if I get to portray a character, a killer, why not portray one of the most vicious ones of all time in my own way with Rob Zombie's twist. So let's rock and roll. And that's kind of how it yeah, came to be. How long, how long were you on the set? I I worked for like two weeks on it. Two weeks, yeah. damn. Cause he, he he don't take long to make his movies. Right? Well, like he does it. Pretty no, no, we we did it in twenty one days. You know, yeah. but like so two weeks, 14? like maybe like it wasn't like two full weeks. Like I worked three days one week, and then like four days the following week. What was it like? Was that a? It's not a warehouse, but where did y'all film that at? We filmed uh, like my scenes. We filmed in this big beautiful theater on Broadway. Is that a theater? Like the intro section of. Uh, of, of uh, Sickhead, and then the, the other parts were, were in, like, the cellars of, like, a big, like, abandoned warehouse that was in uh, the downtown studios in L.A., all, all, awesome. all in Los Angeles. Because it looks, you know, so real. Oh, yeah. Like, like it looks so grimy. Even, look, even being on set, just being there, like, it just created the whole fear already, you know? Oh, yeah, hell yeah. So what, I guess you can't talk about Three from Hell, like, your Not character? really. I mean, all I can say... I can't really say much. Okay, yeah, yeah. I don't want to press you on that. But what about Candy Corn? Like you said, it's going to come up soon. Yeah, Candy Corn. We we had we to get it. it. We we had to find the right people to to know to fund it to to, yeah. to believe in it and to like really want to be a part of it. And we did. I can't I can't mention the name right now. But That's we, cool. We've already shot thirty percent of the film and we finished shooting at the end of this uh, November into December, and it's going to be done by March. Because oh, yeah. the, beauti- the beautiful thing about Josh Hasty, who is the director, writer of it, is he's so, so talented that we don't have to go to, like, ten different places after yeah. the film's done. He sound designs it, he scores it, he color corrects it, he does all the CGI, if we have any. He, he does everything. He's So once all the footage is in the can, it's, it's basically done. So, yeah, we, f- we found someone to f- fund it and that believes in it, and we're... we're we're finishing this movie, man. It's going to be awesome. People are excited for it, though. Yeah, like, no, it's, a lot of people. It's, you know, the wait has been long, but it's going to be worth yeah, it. Yeah, a lot of people. Well, man, I appreciate you doing this for yeah, me. Yeah, no problem, man. That's Poncho Muller, guys. Thank appreciate you, guys. It. Thank you. We thank you for listening. We appreciate you. Uh, our uh, podcast will be coming out on Halloween, so you know it's fucking Halloween-themed. Halloween-themed movies and the Halloween franchise, the top five worst trick-or-treat candies we can get. We're each coming up with five different top five trick-or-treat things that you get in your bag as a kid what are the worst and we're all got to discuss so that we don't overlap and uh the movie of the week with it being the fifth week in october we're changing it up just not from uh just streaming services but it will be halloween 2018 because it's on fucking halloween yep so uh, and it's one of the biggest movies out right now yeah, so I mean, you know, so we're trying to do something special for Halloween because it's rare that this podcast is going to drop on Halloween. I mean, in all honesty. So uh, we appreciate y'all listening and uh, go follow us on all of our social media, TN Horror News. Yep, that's all we got. We out. Peace. Stay spooky. Try not to be an asshole.